here's an article from For Forbes. Why gold is a good investment right now may be set for a new record price. Gold prices are approaching it, their all-time high with a 10% increase this year, driven by investors seeking a safe haven asset amid economic uncertainty. UBS predicts gold could surpass its record price, setting a target of 2200 per ounce by next March, citing factors such as weakening U.S. dollar banking sector stress, debt ceiling concerns, easing interest rate expectations, and the likelihood of a recession. Gold's price surge is primarily influenced by macro variables rather than supply and demand fundamentals. UBS uh, analyst Cleve uh, Ruckert notes that gold's price is driven by factors like U.S. real estate and the strength of the U.S. dollar. The surge in gold price is unique as it is unrelated to its case. So use case. What do you think is going to be happening with gold? Well, uh, I think it's a question of timing. Right. So if you say, is it five years or is it the next five months? Uh, I'll go ahead and start by saying that I think everyone should own gold. And I don't really see it as an investment. I just see it as insurance. So regardless of the price, I always put it 10 percent of my portfolio because I don't care if the price goes up or down. It's just purchasing power. It's, it's that insurance policy. Now, if you say the next five months, I would say my base case is that gold actually goes down, believe it or not, because I think that it's overbought. And if you look at history, going back to COVID or the GFC, when you have a crisis situation, gold actually goes down because it's the only thing on the balance sheet that these big funds can sell. It's the only thing that has a bid because it's doing its job, right? So if you go back to Lehman Brothers, you see that gold just crashes. And then once rates get down to zero and the market says, okay, we, we've, we've kicked the can down the road, as Pat was saying, because we did all this, we'll call it quote unquote money printing, then they, gold rips higher absolutely rips higher and it did the exact same thing during covid so if you say the next five months i'd say there's a, a my base case is that gold actually trades lower uh, but if you say over the next three years or the next five years i think it goes way 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 higher uh, but i don't know in real terms definitely in nominal terms but uh I, I again that's what the caveat of i think anyone should always own gold pretty much at any price because it's not an investment it's insurance i think i agree with you 100%. I don't really care about the next five months because that's not an investment horizon for me. Yeah. But I think in the long term, gold certainly does continue to go up um, because of exactly what we said. We're de-dollarizing because we've got nothing to de because we're de-dollarizing, we've got nothing else to de-dollarize in. Right now, there's only one other neutral network which is not owned by any of the players, right? And that neutral network is gold, mm. right? Like, if you think about Currencies, currencies are all linked to a specific country. Gold is not necessarily linked to a specific country. Right. It's right. the second network. Now, the law of network effect says that it's it's called Barabasi's law, and I can I can maybe break down network effects, but the law of network effect states that a in the absence of regulatory interference, users will flock to the busiest nodes. So, what's the busiest node? The busiest node is the U.S. dollar today. So let's just think about what network effects actually are. If a network is defined as anything where each individual user increases the value of the network exponentially. Okay, so let's just quickly define that. If we talk about WhatsApp, which is a telecommunications network, if there are two people on the network, myself and Adam, the maximum number of calls I can make on the network is I can call you and you can call me. Two people can make calls, there's two calls on the network. If we add Patrick to the network, I can call you, you can call me. I can call Patrick, he can call me. And he, Patrick can call you and you can call Patrick. So now there's six. There's six. So we've increased the value of the network exponentially. Just by one person. Mm. Exponentially. So the first thing is that networks continue to grow at an accelerating rate exponentially, which is the most powerful effect in the world. That's why, that's why networks are so powerful. That's why Google is so powerful and Amazon is so powerful and Uber is so powerful is because they are all networks. That's the only thing that they all have in common that, that is amazing. Now... The second rule of networks is in, in the absence of any regulatory interference, users will flock to the busiest node. So I always say, if you're landing in a new country and you've got to decide whether you're going to go onto WhatsApp or some other chat messenger, you're going to go to WhatsApp because everybody's using WhatsApp. That's the busiest network node. So it's the same thing with, with, with money because money is the ultimate network. Mm. The US dollar is the network with the most users and therefore people will flock to that network. The second biggest network is gold. And so you have, to hold, you have to hold gold because of the network effect that it has in, in the monetary system. And that's why I agree with you. I don't have 10% because I think each individual based on their risk tolerance yeah, may I be agree. slightly different. But you have to hold gold as part of your portfolio. Now, to me, 
I see an extension of gold, which is digital gold, and to me that's Bitcoin. And so I take some of that allocation and I put that, some of that allocation into Bitcoin. Yeah, I was in Turkey a couple months ago, and uh, I wanted to spend. We all know that they've gone through this hyperinflation. So I spent a few days there. I had a tour guide. This gal is probably 30 years old. And I was obviously asking That's what every. You call them now, there's. What's that? Tour guides. I like it. <laughs> uh, but uh, my wife should only find out <laughs> yeah. I have a tour guide here in Miami. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just, but, don't, uh, just don't tell her it's an end. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this weekend I was in South Beach hanging out with a couple tour guides uh, down there. <laughs> anyway, yeah. go ahead, George. But I, I was very inquisitive with pretty much everyone I met. You know, I said, how are you guys dealing with this inflation? And they're actually dealing with it very well. But here was this was their strategy. What they do is they get paid in lira. At the end of the week, they pay all their bills. And anything they have left over, they immediately turn it into dollars or gold. Yeah. Exactly what he was saying. And then I went through the airport, that brand new airport they have that's mm-hmm. gorgeous. And on my way out, I just happened to get a coffee, you know, and they opened the cash register. And I just happened to look in that cash register in Turkey, and all they had in there were U.S. dollars. Well, let me tell you what happens when, when you can't get U.S. dollars, because the, the flow happens. First of all, they use U.S. dollars, but then the problem is that everybody buys up all the U.S. dollars and there's not enough U.S. dollars. And then you know what they do. That's the short squeeze I'm talking about. Well, no. They start using airtime data and minutes. So in in South Africa, for example, because we're in Zimbabwe where you can't get dollars, what you trade in is you trade in minutes of airtime. So call minutes or gigs of data. Yeah, they they do that in Ecuador as well. But I want to be very clear for the viewers, and I think you might, might echo these thoughts. I'm saying that the dollar, if we have a big crisis situation, you know, there's that flight to safety and the liquidity issues we talked about, the dollar goes up. But I'm talking about going up against other fiat currencies. I am not talking about the dollar going up against goods and services in the United States. And this is a hard concept for people to understand. They have to look at the dollar as two separate currencies. So inside the United States, we can have 10% inflation while the dollar is going up by 10% outside of the United States relative to other fiat currencies such as the euro, the Turkish lira, etc. And people really need to understand that concept. Uh, so if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.